Hello and welcome to another tech tip by VM Nerd. Our tech topic for today is how to install and configure Acme certificates with HAProxy on PFSense. Our objectives are to create a visual build diagram of our demo infrastructure, apply a base configuration of an out of the box installation of PFSense, install any required packages within PFSense, set up dynamic DNS for a domain name in PFSense, including the registrar configuration, set up and configure Acme certificates, set up and configure HA proxy, the base configuration, the back end configuration, and the front end configuration to support Acme Let's Encrypt. We will be setting up a custom unavailable page, configuring a time-based firewall rule for HA proxy and Let's Encrypt, and perform some external testing. And with that, let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our diagram going. We'll be using uh, PowerPoint to perform this task. Do a really quick layout, make it blank. We do some inserts here. Let's uh, do a shape. In this case, we will use a box. Okay, so here is our ISP. So bold. Make that nice and big so everyone can actually see it. Okay, so we got our ISP. We have our PFSense firewall. And then of course we have our management device make this guy nice and small okay and now we also have an external client so he will be going through the internet to do this make the font a little bit smaller so it's actually legible and we will go ahead and insert another shape. The shape will be a cloud to show our internet, I guess. Send to DAC. Okay, so this is our ISP loose in internet land. PFSense connects to him. So let's go ahead and build the paths. We actually had those in there, didn't we? Uh, here we go. Okay, so our management box will connect to PFSense. Our PFSense will connect to our ISP. I don't like the colors, they don't stand out very nice, so let's use yellow. That way they're actually visible. Make these a little bit bigger if I can. Microsoft has this thing called Format Painter, which allows you to copy the configuration of an item. So, and then our external client will basically connect through the internet to get to our PFSense box. Basically through their provider into our ISP. So, for illustrations, we'll just link it directly to our ISP. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in some IP addresses, at least something that makes sense. So our external client, his IP address will be 23.237.58.241. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move him around a little bit, just so that way it's easier to read. I'm just going to clone this guy. So our... ISP IP address. We're going to make this white or yellow or some other color that stands out so we can actually read it. We'll bold it up a little bit, maybe make it a little better. So, our ISP's IP address, at least the one that we're looking from the internet as, will be 192.240.123.35. Okay, and then from here, 
our pfSense WAN interface is going to be 192.168.31.250. So from our ISP, he is NATed into this address. So when we actually configure our pfSense, he'll have this address. And then what we will do is build our inside address. So our inside address will be something like this. It'll be 192.168.10. And we'll make him a 254. And our client will be somewhere in this range, the 10 range here. More than likely like a 100 or some variation of that. So we'll put that for now. So this is what our diagram looks like. So we'll have our management, which connects to PFSense, goes out to the ISP, and basically anyone on the internet can technically hit our firewall from this point using this address. Uh, and here's our external client. This will be testing, uh, once we get the HA proxy configuration going, the external client will actually display the error page that we talked about. Okay, so let's go ahead and get building. So first things first. Let's go ahead and open up our PFSense box and we will do our base configuration. Okay, so the base starts out as admin, default password of PFSense, and we will not be following the wizard. So let's go ahead and get rid of that, the net gate uh, thing there. So we'll go here to the advanced. Uh, one of the things I want to do is let's go ahead and switch the port because we're going to need those later. So we'll go ahead and switch it to quad eights. And we will need to disable this web redirect rule. So basically PFSense by default will take port 80 and redirect it. So if we open up that to the internet uh, via firewall rule, it'll try to redirect, which is something we don't really want it to do, especially on the IP address that we were using. So switch the thing to N234. There we go. Okay, so let's go back advanced. Let's go ahead and disable IPv6. So we we gotta do that. We gotta go into the uh, firewall rules under the LAN interface. Disable IPv6. And we'll go ahead and do an apply here. Uh, let's see, the next step is to go to the WAN interface. And because we are actually using it on a 192 address, so if we go back here to our diagram, if you look here, our WAN interface is actually a, a RFC 1918, which is a, a basically a private IP space. We'll go ahead and disable that. RFC 1918 right here. So we'll go ahead and disable that, but I'm going to turn this off because it's not really necessary for at least what we're doing. Okay, let's go ahead and do an apply. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go ahead and change the LAN address. Actually, one more step we got to do. Let's go ahead and disable the IPv6 DHCP since we will not be using it. Okay, then we can go change the LAN. We'll disable the IPv6 and we said 10.254 slash 24 go ahead and do a save now we don't necessarily want to do an apply just yet because we haven't done anything with DHCP services uh, since we changed the default IP we need to go update DHCP services so when we go to ask for an IP address we'll actually get one in the range that we're requesting so here we got a 10 10 Go ahead and do a save here. Cool. So next, one more thing too. Let's go to general setup. We'll update this. We call it gateway.vmnerd.org. We'll go ahead and use Google DNS servers. Eight. Los Angeles. Just going through things I like to switch. Go ahead and I 
personally like three columns on the dashboard and we will switch it to red okay so go ahead and do a save here this will update quite a few things and then the last step at least for now let's go ahead and apply the the land configuration so we'll go ahead and click apply and it's waiting for us because we switched the IP address so if we look here our IP is 192.168.1.100 so let's go ahead and do a release and let's do a renew we should get a 10 address and we did so 10.100 just like the uh, here so we got 10.100 which was expected so let's go ahead and switch this to 10.254 okay might have to do the whole login process which we do okay so let's go ahead and add some things on here that I like to see so for this particular demonstration we're going to be doing the DNS component so we'll go ahead and add this here let's go ahead and add the services I personally like to see the services so we'll go ahead and do that move it over save it and let's see what else we got anything else that's interesting okay so we're good for now Okay, so the next step is to go ahead and install the packages. So let's go right here. We're going to be installing the Acme Let's Encrypt package. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll so this one looks like it's done. So now we're going to go ahead and install the HA proxy component. Do a search. There it is. And we will wait till this thing says success. All right, looks good. Okay, so these are installed. Let's go ahead and go back to the home page. Let's go ahead and add the HA proxy. So that way I could see it there at all times. And let's go ahead and switch the password just because we can. Okay. That way we can not see that uh, message there. We really should change it. So it's a good recommendation. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So we're going to start out by configuring the dynamic DNS component. Okay, so if you look right here, there's this check IP services. This is a, a thing that goes out and checks for your external IP. It's built in. You can looks like you can add some more, but this is the one that's built into PFSense, and it is used uh, to validate your external IP address. All right, so now we need to go to our registrar. In the case for us, it's Google Domains, and what we're going to do is go ahead and set up this uh, dynamic DNS component within their configuration here so if, if you scroll down within your uh, the DNS section within Google domains there's an option that says synthetic records and we're gonna go ahead and select the dynamic DNS so something to note is that wildcard is not necessarily supported at least uh, I haven't been able to get it to work at this time but uh, at least at the time of this particular video uh, we're just gonna go ahead and use host names so we're going to set up multiple host names uh, just so that way you guys can see how it works. So the first one we're going to do is going to be gateway.vmnerd.org. And the second one is going to be, uh, let's go ahead and call it captive. Yep, we'll add that. And let's add one more too. We'll call it drive. Maybe another video later be doing something for you with the word drive in it. So drive.vmnerd.org. So we'll go ahead and click add. Okay, so if you look at this carefully, you'll see that we have these three options. If I expand these out, you will actually see that there's a username and a password. And that actually goes for all of these here. 
So we're going to go ahead and do the view credentials option. Don't worry, I'm going to change it so you guys can see it as I go through this process. Okay, so now I went ahead and copied the name, uh, but I'll have to come back and grab the password as well. So let's go ahead and click the add button. We're going to select Google for our DNS, Google domains. It's going to be based off the WAN. And at this point here, we're going to go ahead and put gateway.vmner. It looks like I already typed it in from a previous uh, for the username. Go ahead and type that in. And we will be doing this for the password. We will need that as well. So go ahead and type that in twice. Yeah, it's important that you define the host name. So whatever you put here for the host name, it must correspond uh, with your registrar configuration, which in our case it does. So gateway.vmner.org, username, password, etc. So now when I scroll down, I'm going to go ahead and click the Save button. And we should have an IP that's registered. It will show us in a green highlighted area. And it does. It matches with our external uh, WAN IP or external NATed IP from our ISP. So if you look 192.240.123.35, that's exactly what we have. So we're going to do this a couple more times because of the fact that we have multiple domains. And we're actually going to add them to our uh, Acme Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. We'll add multiple names in there so you guys can see how that all works. So let's go back to our Google domains and let's do this a couple more times. So we're going to grab Drive. So we'll go ahead and add that for a host name. Uh, again, I don't care if you guys see the password, it doesn't really matter because it will change. So scroll, username, and password. I actually kind of like this. They did a really good job here. Make sure it's Google Domains. Good. We will click Save again, and we should have the same IP here. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add one additional domain. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and do the Google Domains. Same thing. Let's go grab the host name up here. Captive. And the captive really represents the captive portal. So later on, I, I think I had some uh, some fellow YouTubers that wanted to kind of see how that works with the trusted certificate. So we can potentially enable that uh, at another time. But this is half the battle, getting this certificate installed. I assure you, once you see how this works, this is actually, the rest of it will just happen. Okay, so all three of the DNS names showed up correctly. Um, I really don't want to type all this stuff in again, so I'm going to go ahead and open up a notepad and capture all of the names here. Because uh, we're going to have to type it a little later on when we get to the uh, Acme certificates component of this. Okay. okay, so we will save this for a little later. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get the base configuration for Acme certificates set up. So the first thing we're going to need to do is add So luckily, I typed a lot of this stuff in before. So they have a testing component. If you're not sure uh, kind of what you're doing, uh, it's good to note that the testing option does allow you to try as many times as you need to till you get it right. Um, if you use these production ones, they limit you to the number of certificates you can generate. Uh, and those numbers also include failed attempts. So for this video, we'll go ahead and use a production class one since I'm pretty sure it's going to work. And we will add the webmaster VM nerd. Um, we need to create an account key, and this is really the private key used by the system for the SSL certificate. Okay, and then once we do that, we click the registration component, and I believe this actually will put it into our CA section. Okay, all right, so that piece there is done. Um, we will need to come back to this because there's some steps that we have to do. 
uh, we will need to go uh, to the HA proxy component and start working on some of this. So the first thing we're going to do in here is we're going to create the back end. And luckily I already have a name put in there, so I don't have to do that. Forward to, this is just a generic name that you want to call it. We're going to forward it to the local host and I already have a port that's predefined. Uh, you can technically use any port. I don't think it really matters. Um, uh, when you get to the Acme certificates component of this, it'll say define a port. And when that happens, what it does, if you say uh, use a web server, it will actually open that up on behalf of the client at the time when you're asking for the request. So there is a setting down here. We want to go ahead and disable the health check because when the Acme certificates makes the request, we don't need to have this thing offline when they go to make the request. Okay, so let's go ahead and click save. We'll go ahead and apply. While we're here, let's go ahead and create a, we talked a little bit about a maintenance page, but let's go ahead and add that now. So we'll call it maintenance and we'll just do a basic maintenance. Okay. Uh, you can get as cute as you'd like. Um, there are a lot of options. This thing will accept uh, CSS scripts. So if you're good at CSS, you can do some pretty interesting things. Uh, like center, make sure you really are centering everything. So H1 uh, slash, let's end our center. And this is just really so that way when you go to the page and there's no back end available, you're going to get this maintenance screen. Okay, so this is actually going to be our 503 error page, meaning that there's nothing there for it to connect to. Okay, but this is just us getting cute. We want to at least display something so when the website is not found or you don't follow the correct path during the window that this path is executing, you will be displayed this maintenance page. Okay, so the next step, let's go ahead and configure the front end. Okay, and we're going to call it the same thing. We can call it that over and over and over again. Uh, let me go ahead and leave that. We're going to go ahead and create a access control entry or control list. Okay, and we're going to call this Acme. And what we want to do, actually before we do this, let's go grab the path. So inside of Acme certificates, um, there's a path that it's looking for. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click add. We're not going to follow through with it, but we are going to do this here. So right here is the path we need. Okay, so what's going to happen is we're going to say to HA proxy when somebody comes in uh, to this particular front end, this uh, uh, IP front end, we're going to say uh, if you follow this path, let's, let's do that. So if you follow this path, if it contains, or actually we can, I think we can do start with, right? So start with this, then what we want to do down here under the actions, use backend. So we're going to put Acme, okay? We're going to say use the back backend Acme VM Nerd or Prod. So uh, the server that we just created that says, you know, go ahead and, and allow this through, um, it's going to allow it through if the criteria for this matches. Okay. Otherwise, we're not going to do any back end. And when we go down here where it says uh, error files, we're going to use our maintenance page. And the error code we're going to look for is 503. 503 means I can't find anything, so there you go. I personally like to enable this 404, so that way uh, the original IP from the client itself is actually passed through. Um, and I usually do this anyways uh, from a logging perspective. It's good to know who uh, is trying to connect to your website. So we'll go ahead and save. Go ahead and apply. And now we can actually enable the front end. So uh, to enable it, we got to click the enable option. And we have to select the number of, uh, I guess, connections. So we'll go down here. And that should do it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click the apply option. Okay, so now that that is done, we need to go and create a firewall rule. And this firewall rule has to be allowed through. Um, we're going to allow it from any source on the internet. 
and we're going to allow it to our WAN address. Okay. Since the WAN address is um, listening, uh, at least the uh, for port 80, which is our HA proxy, it will allow it to connect to HA proxy. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do an apply. And I guess before we go any further, let's go ahead and just do a quick check. So we can go ahead and go to our external client up here and just just do a quick. Let's just see what happens. I'm expecting to see the uh, right. So I'm expecting to see that 503 error page. Okay, so let's go there. And there it is, the maintenance. Remember how we created the maintenance? So if we pass that other URL, it's going to try and redirect us to our actual um, our Acme page itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the Acme component. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do this part. Okay, so we're going to call it. And for the domain name, this is going to get, this is actually going to be rather interesting. So we're going to go ahead and pick a standalone. The port we're going to listen to is 4002. And don't use wildcard, you, uh, at least for the for what we're doing, it's not really going to work um, because you have to define it in Google Domains and then you have to uh, statically assign somehow your IP address. Um, I, there's ways to make it work, but for the purpose of it, this video, that's out of scope uh, for what we're doing. So go ahead and do drive. Same thing. We'll just follow the exact same sequence. We're going to do this three times. Okay, so we're going to do 4002 gonna do one more so we got our gateway our drive and then the last one is captive for captive portal okay go ahead and add standalone same port 4002 sleep uh, if if it takes a long time or more than 120 seconds uh, for doing any kind of changes you may need to adjust this uh, but for what we're doing it should be sufficient um, and at a later time, uh, depending on where you're going to apply this SSL certificate, you might need to restart some services. Uh, we'll come back a little later once we confirm that this is going to work, and we will apply it to where we need to apply it. So for now, we're going to go ahead and click the Save button. Okay, so now that that's all configured, we should be able to hit Issue, and it'll take a few seconds, so let's go ahead and do that. And at this point, it's actually reaching out to the Acme Let's Encrypt infrastructure and asking for them to go ahead and provide as a valid certificate. So I'm expecting to have some good results here. So we'll scroll down. And there it is. So we did get the certificate. It looks like it was successful. So everything looks good. All right, so let's go ahead and put the certificate somewhere that we can use. So let's go ahead and apply it. We can do it here. That's the other one. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and apply it here under the system. And if you look here, there's our certificate. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click the uh, save option. And it may force us to re log in. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually log in. Let's use the URL. So we'll use gateway. Oops. Gateway.vmnerd.org. Let's see if we can. Oh, yeah, see? There we go. So if you look right here, we actually have a valid certificate. We're going to go here to the, uh, I believe it's under developers here. And we're going to look for the security settings. And here's our certificate information. So if you look right here, it's issued to us. It's valid. It's in our trusted store. It's by Let's Encrypt. It's good for, it looks like, about three months. And let's inspect our certificate because we're expecting multiple names. So inside your certificate, you should have a section in here that says subject alternative names. And inside here, I'm expecting to see the three names that we created, which is captive, drive, and gateway.vmnerd.org. And all of them appear to be there. So since that's the case, let's go ahead and log in. And I think we, yeah, we changed the password. All right, we don't need to save anything, that's fine. So if you look right here, our configuration here is still going. This is all looks good. It's validating the external IPs, looks good. And so the next thing we need to do is go into our Acme certificates. And let's go ahead and edit this configuration. So down here before I talked about a restart, since we've applied the SSL to the web GUI, 
we need to add this command so that way when it goes to refresh and renew the certificate we know that it will process accordingly and then once it's processed it will restart the GUI so the GUI can take that configuration okay so we'll go ahead and do that okay so the last thing we need to do is set up a time-based firewall rule okay so currently at this time it's 12 ish in my neck of the woods so we'll go ahead and create a schedule okay um, actually before we do that let's go back in here and let's look at the cron settings so right here uh, to get this thing to automatically fire on its own um, we need to make sure that uh, that we have a rule that's valid and open during this time window so it looks like this goes off once a day at 316 just to check and make sure okay so when we go to enable that we need to make sure that our firewall firewall rule is valid and working okay because we don't necessarily want that open all the time at least me personally I don't like that um, but you may have instances where this is acceptable um, and there may be some some creative stuff you can do with HA proxy but for the uh, purpose of this video uh, we will go ahead and create a time-based rule so we know 316 let's go ahead and create a schedule and we will add and let's see uh, offline eh, we'll just call this um, demo um, acme uh, time okay and so what we're going to do here so something interesting about this uh, particular uh, schedule information um, if you want to this to happen on a daily basis and not have to create a bazillion of these things you just click on the the actual day and it'll highlight in blue okay if you want individual days you can select one and it'll go green but um, you do it this way and this will actually fire off every day we can specify at 3 it says 316 so we need to start it at 315 and we need to end the rule at 330 okay so I'm gonna go ahead and add this okay and we'll go ahead and click Save um, I want to, before I, you know, um, whoops, didn't like what we're doing here, so let's get rid of these dashes. Maybe it doesn't like those. So let's try that again. So save. Okay, there we go. So let's go back to the rule, and what we're going to do is I'm expecting this thing to not be active anymore. Okay, so let's go to the rule, and we will go ahead and click the add button here. And... Let's add this piece here. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is at 3 a.m., if you look right here, the yellow indicates that it's actually offline. So if we hover over it, it said this rule is currently not active because the period is expired. Okay, so that means from our external client, so before we had this, we were able to see the demo page. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this out so that we don't have to do that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do paste it in there. And I'm expecting to get no results because the firewall rule is blocking us. Okay, so we will eventually time out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and re-enable or add uh, a time sequence that will allow it to actually go through. So that we can see what it would look like. You know, obviously our current time is different uh, than the 3 a.m. window. Okay, so let's go ahead and do one more schedule. So we'll go ahead and add one more. Demo Acme time uh, test. So we'll call this the test. We'll do the same thing, only this time we're going to add a valid window that is currently active. So like I said, in my neck of the woods, it's about this time. And we will end it at 45. Actually, let's go between there and there. So that gives me a nice half an hour. Okay, so there's no, nothing weird, so we'll go ahead and click, oh, didn't like the dash at the end. I keep forgetting. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click save. And now what we're going to do, this is kind of cool, I didn't know this. So let's see the little clock here, it actually uh, shows that this is actually valid, that it uh, is in effect. So let's go back to our firewall rule. And let's go ahead and adjust it so that way you can see what the rule looks like when it is actually valid okay so if you see before remember it was yellow now it's green 
let's go back to our external client and just do a refresh there we go now we get the maintenance page so the idea is that you know we only have it open when we need it and when we don't need it we shut it down so let's say you had a, uh, a web server behind here uh, maybe your web server rule is underneath it so when it's not valid this rule won't be valid and it'll go to the next rule to process so as an example let's copy let's go ahead and clone this rule I'll show you what I'm talking about so we will disable this schedule component okay so if you see there's no schedule component and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and apply the one that's yellow okay so or the one you know the real acme one so if you had another web server you know it would just go somewhere else okay so we allowed that one through so in theory even though this rule is not active uh, it should still go through and we'll actually see the state or hit counter change so let's go ahead and do a refresh I'm expecting it to go through and it does let's go back here let's do a quick refresh and we should see the state change yeah see if you look right here the bottom rule it actually processed and went through here so that means this one here stopped applying and the next one kicked in so maybe you have this going to another host maybe you're using a NAT translation or some variation of that I hope you enjoyed our video on uh, setting up uh, HA proxy with Acme certificates uh, what we did we went ahead and created a visual build diagram of our infrastructure we applied a base configuration of out-of-the-box installation of PFSense we installed required packages we set up our dynamic DNS uh, for our domain within PFSense including the Google domains registration component of it we set up Acme certificates we configured HA proxy to support Acme certificates we configured a custom error page we set up a actually a couple time-based firewall rules just so that way you guys can see it in action and we did some external testings I hope you liked our video and uh, have a great day don't forget to check out our YouTube channel and website at www.vmnerd.com for more tech tips.